Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Greenovate. Uh, my name is Brian Coop from uh, Boston Properties. It's so good to have everybody here today at 888 Boylston, a building that we've had so much good fortune on in terms of sustainability. But we just absolutely love the idea of Greenovate, and we're thrilled to be your host tonight. I wanted to uh, first start off and tell you a little quick story about um, the administration and our interfacing with the administration on things like Greenovate and sustainability. And the story goes back to when uh, Mayor Walsh was a uh, candidate, Marty Walsh. And I have the privilege to serve on the Green Ribbon Council founded by Amos Hostetter. And it's a commission made up of companies and universities and all the institutions of Boston with their leadership coming together to talk about sustainability. So candidate Mayor Walsh comes and he visits us and he said, you know, I really believe in sustainability for the city and we need a, a, a solid plan for the future. But he did something different that was different than any politician who had come and visited with us. And he said, but I'm not an expert yet and I need to listen and learn and get advice from you and other organizations in the city of Boston. And I tell the story because I think it really is indicative of this administration in terms of the sincerity and authenticity that is so often lacking with our political leaders. And Mayor Walsh immediately, once he was voted in as our mayor, went to action. And one of the things I think is the best thing he did was he went and recruited the best possible director for environment department in the nation, I believe. I'm a little bit biased, but he recruited Austin Blackman, and we're so thrilled to be working with him. I'd like to say, uh, have a big hand for Austin and his entire department tonight. But let's talk about Greenovate and why Boston Property is so thrilled to host this. We absolutely said yes, we'd love to have Greenovate here because it's, it's really about something that we truly believe in, and that is a saying that we've got at Boston Properties there, what we celebrate, we become. There's also quotes that are, your thoughts become your actions. Recognition is so important, and today we're celebrating in recognition those who strive to make our city more sustainable, those who strive to make our city a better version of not only ourselves, but a better version of the city. There couldn't be anything worse than to have people striving and doing all the things that the award winners are going to do tonight without receiving recognition. That would be an awful situation, wouldn't it? It's that kinetic energy of recognition that keeps us moving forward. We are what we celebrate. Tonight we recognize those who make our city a better version of ourselves, and we're so thrilled uh, to be a part of that. Those who strive and achieve, we thank you tonight, and we thank... Uh, Mayor Marty Walsh and Austin Blackman and your entire team for the true north leadership you've provided because let's face it, in the country at a federal level right now, it's more of a weather vane spinning and we need true north leadership like Austin and his team is providing and also those of those you tonight who strive and achieve. So congratulations to all the award winners tonight. Thank you. Well, thanks so much again, Brian. I'm going to ask you to stay up here on stage with me, and I'm going to also ask Ben Myers from Boston Properties to come up on stage, and they're looking very surprised, but I felt like I had to recognize Boston Properties, both Brian and Ben, for all of the great work that they did. They've been very, very, very modest. You know, they did, Brian did mention that he's a member of the Green Ribbon Commission, which is a, an advisory panel, which is so important to the work that we do here in the city of Boston. And Brian has really been on the vanguard of that. But in addition to that, Boston Properties is a previous Green Evade Award winner. They're also a carbon cup participant, meaning that they've pledged to hit a 35% reduction in greenhouse gas emissions on a voluntary basis. They've also obviously sponsored the awards here tonight in this beautiful, amazing building, 888 Boylston Street, or as I refer to it, the house that Coop built. <laughs> this is going to be an unbelievable building, and it's got... It's going to have the living wall that you saw downstairs. It's got a green roof. It's got solar on top. It's got wind turbines. 
it's going to be 47% more energy efficient than its peers. They should be extraordinarily proud of this building. And in addition to all of that, it is projected to be LEED certified platinum. And very, very, very impressive on that as well. Now, I bring up the LEED certification because the U.S. Green Building Council was so impressed by not only the work that Boston Properties has done, but many of our other partners that we have here in the room, that they chose to have their annual conference here in Boston, 35,000 people to celebrate for Green Build 2017, and Boston Properties, again, at the vanguard of leading that effort. So let's have another round of applause for Boston Properties. And in recognition of all of these achievements, I felt like I had to give Boston Properties an honorary Green of Eight Award tonight. So let's have another round of applause for Boston Properties. So I know I already mentioned Green Build. And I know that I mentioned that Green Build's gonna be here in Boston, and we're very, very proud of that. And we know that Boston was selected in part because of Boston Properties and the great work that we're doing, but also because of the great work that everyone in this room is doing in the city of Boston to help us become more sustainable and a more efficient, thriving city to live and work in. And that's really a testament to all of you. And that's why we're here tonight, to celebrate the work that is happening here in this community. Boston is world renowned for our sustainability programs, not because of what we're doing in City Hall, but because of everyone here in this room. And on an annual basis, we wanna make sure that we take the time to really appreciate those efforts. So thanks to everyone who's here tonight. And we've actually got a video from someone who wishes he could be here tonight to thank every, everyone for their participation. Hi, I'm Mayor Marty Walsh, and I'm sorry I can't join you all tonight, but I want to congratulate all the nominees, the finalists and winners of this year's Green of Eight Boston Awards. We received more than 75 nominations, and nearly 2,000 people voted for our 21 finalists. From bringing fresh produce to our neighborhoods, to teaching our youth about climate change, to taking care of our city's green spaces, all of you play an important role in making our city greener, healthier, and more resilient. And on behalf of the City of Boston, I want to say thank you. Every day you help us save energy, cut emissions, reduce waste, ensure clean air and water, and prepare the effects of climate change. This work has never been more important. Thank you for being a part of the movement. Have a great time tonight and happy Earth Day. So as the mayor mentioned, we had a huge number of nominations this year, making it very tough to select awardees. But we also have to give some special recognition to the Gas Leaks allies. They were finalists in two categories, buildings and energy, as well as community engagement. So let's hear it for the allies. I also have to rec recognize a few members of my staff tonight for doing such a phenomenal job with this event. First and foremost, to Jessica Feldish, our Green of Eight Boston Program Manager. <laughs> Thanks also to Lourdes, Alina, Christiana, Chris, and Jeff on our team for their work on the community engagement team and for helping organize tonight. And also a special thanks to Lauren Zingarelli and to Chris Ross for all the work that they've done, not only for this event, but also for the, all the Earth Week events that we've had planned this week. Uh, they wouldn't be possible without their efforts. So thank you to Chris and to Lauren as well. I also have to recognize a handful of my colleagues from City Hall who are, are supporting us here tonight as well. Our Chief of Streets, Chris Osgood. If you can just wave your hand and be recognized, Chris. 
Chief Osgood is helping us with complete streets and making it easier to walk and bike here in the city of Boston, among other things, so thank you, Chris. We also have Chief Arroyo from Health and Human Services is here tonight. Chief, if you can just wave as well. Now, over the weekend, we had one Boston day, and Chief Arroyo organized uh, something called Operation Thank a Vet, and this is something where we get some volunteers to go around and thank our veterans for their service. And uh, uh, you know, he and I talked, and we thought it'd be a great idea to get our teams to hand out some LED bulbs to these veterans, and uh, that wouldn't have been possible without your leadership. So thank you very much, Chief Arroyo. Also have a. Uh, we also are joined by Dr. Atia Martin, our uh, Chief Resilience Officer. <laughs> Dr. Martin's been integral in making sure that not only our climate plans and our adaptation plans, but making sure that all of those are connected to our equity planning as well as our conversations on race in Boston. So thank you very much, Dr. Martin, for being with us tonight. <laughs> You know, I, I really do feel truly blessed to be able to work with such a strong team at City Hall, with the mayor, and, and frankly, with all of you. Uh, without all of your support, I wouldn't be able to say that we're well on our way to accomplishing our climate goals. I wouldn't be able to say that our city's economy grew by 13% as emissions went down by 17% from 2004 to 2015. That we increased our goal to be carbon neutral by 2050. I wouldn't be able to say that carbon ready Boston, or climate ready Boston, the most innovative and data driven approach to climate planning, was fully integrated into our city wide master plan called Imagine Boston 2030. That we're currently underway with neighborhood level resiliency planning in East Boston and Charlestown. That on Friday, that we'll release an RFP to start resiliency planning in Fort Point Channel in the South Boston waterfront. And that for the very first time, Mayor Walsh's capital plan recommends funding to expand climate planning to all of Boston's most vulnerable neighborhoods. I'm also able to announce that tomorrow we'll launch an engagement program called Climate Ready Boston Leaders. And I, I just have to tell a brief story. When I very first started this job, one of the first meetings I took was a community meeting in East Boston, and we were talking about climate vulnerabilities. And our community that was there said, this is great, this is wonderful, but it's all in English. And I don't know the best way to communicate this to my neighbors and my family who don't speak the, uh, English as their first language. And so we heard that advice, and we we have to give a lot of credit to the Baker administration as well because part of what Climate Ready Boston leaders will do is, is going to train community members and residents to then go and teach their neighbors and their families in the best way that they see fit how to communicate about climate change and what the city of Boston is doing. And it, through support from the Lieutenant Governor's office, we'll be able to carry out those conversations in five different languages. So thank you very much to the Baker administration. We'll be holding a training for Climate Ready Boston leaders on Monday, June 5th, and Tuesday, June 6th, if you're interested. Uh, Maya, if you can just raise your hand. Uh, if you can sign up with Maya at the Green Evate Boston table all the way in the back uh, after uh, the awards tonight. This program is just one of the great examples of how Green Evate Boston can connect you to our city's priorities, our experts, our resources, but most importantly, how it can connect you to each other. Our work to build a carbon-free and climate-ready Boston is dependent on the leadership in this room today. So thank you again for everything that you do for the city of Boston, and it's my pleasure to now introduce Carl Spector, the, the Commissioner of the Environment Department. Thank, thank you, Austin. It's a pleasure to be here today, and it is my great privilege and pleasure to be able to announce the finalists 
for the Green of Eight Awards and to announce the winners. As Austin and the mayor mentioned, there are seven categories of Green of Eight Awards, and we received more than 75 nominations for these awards. I do want to say that uh, this, this is the 11th uh, annual uh, awards that we've given out uh, for, uh, for Green of Eight. The, the early uh, awards had a slightly different name. And one thing that is very striking about it is that the achievements of the finalists and the winners keep getting higher. That uh, a, a winner five years ago would not be a winner today for the same uh, set of achievements. And, you know, and it's a testimony to the people in this room, as Austin ma mentioned, to the leadership that uh, our community is providing that the performance and the goals and the activities of the Boston community in all sectors is getting higher and better and stronger. Um, so, uh, as I said, there were 75 nominations. Uh, we selected three finalists for each category, and in five days of open polling, two, about 2,000 people voted for their favorites. I am going to name the finalists in each category and the winner. Winners, when your name is announced, please join Chief Blackman and me up on the stage to receive your award, your award and have your photo taken. Uh, the first category is waste reduction. The city of Boston is committed to reducing waste by increasing recycling and reuse and diverting organics. By keeping valuable materials out of the waste stream, we can save money, create local jobs, and improve the environment. The city also welcomes innovative strategies to stop waste before it starts. That could include reduced consumption, comprehensive waste education, and new technologies to improve wasteful practices. The finalists in the waste reduction category are Bootstraps Compost in Jamaica Plain, Ciro in Dorchester, and the winner in this category is Boston Building Resources in Mission Hill. The, sec the second category is community engagement. To reach Boston's climate action goals, every resident and business must help. Empowering residents and businesses to take climate action in their own neighborhoods and empowering and educating youth across the city are two priorities of the city of Boston. Tr strong partnerships with our neighborhoods will enable the city to adopt smart policies and programs that prepare Boston for climate change and drive further greenhouse gas reductions over the long term. The finalists are the Gas Leaks Allies, Boston Food Forest Coalition, and the winner is the Codman Square Library Seniors Organic Vegetable Garden in Dorchester. The third category, the third category is buildings and energy. Energy efficiency and renewable energy initiatives are critical to meeting Boston's greenhouse gas reduction goals. Whether it's a single family home, a triple decker, or a large building downtown, every action matters. As residents and businesses continue to take advantage of incentives from our utility partners, far reaching voluntary commitments and strong leadership inspire others to take action and drive the greatest reductions. The finalists are the Boston Public Library, the Gas Leaks Allies, and the winner is the Second Church in Dorchester. The fourth category, sustainable food. Access to healthy local food is a clear community, community priority for Bostonians. Urban farming, local farmers markets, 
community garden plots are all shaping the rich culture of local food in our city and support a local food system that will make Boston more resilient in a changing climate. The finalists are The Daily Table in Dorchester, Fresh Truck in Dorchester, and the winner is the Urban Farming Institute of Roxbury. The fifth category, trees, open space, and landscaping. Trees and open space clean Boston's air, reduce the heat island effect, absorb flood waters, and increase the beauty of the city and improve the health of its residents. Maintaining our historic park system and developing new green spaces as the city grows requires broad support and public-private collaboration. The finalists in this category are Arnetta and Carl Batty of Dorchester, the Boston Food Forest Coalition in Mattapan, and the winner is Pam Sinat of Roslindale. The sixth category is sustainable mobility. As exemplified in the Go Boston 2030 initiative, the Boston community is rising to the challenges of balancing our historic cityscape with the need to adapt and evolve to our changing mobility needs. Public transportation, walking, biking, carpooling, car sharing, and ride sharing are all pieces of the puzzle that will help Boston meet its climate and sustainability and development goals. The finalists in this category are A Better City TMA, Geek House Bikes in Charlestown, and the winner is the Green Streets Initiative. The final category, climate preparedness and resiliency. Although climate change will shape our city in big ways, our response can make sure it is for the better. We can do that by using climate preparedness and resiliency measures to spur economic development, create jobs, invest in public green space, and improve our air and water quality. The finalists in this category are the Alliance for Climate Education Action Fellowship, Reverend Mariama White Hammond, and the winner is the Trust for Public Land. Can we have a round of applause for all of this year's nominees, finalists, and winners? Okay, in closing, in closing, if you haven't already participated in the live action art with our guests from the Artists for Humanity, who've been doing some painting and other work there in the back, I encourage you to stop by and participate. Thanks again to Brian Coop and Boston Properties for hosting this evening, and to Lauren Zingarelli and the Green of Eight Boston team for all their hard work in organizing this event. Please stay and uh, continue to talk and enjoy the refreshments. Thank you, and good night, and see you next year.